Okay, cool. Um, not gonna lie, I'm quite happy that it started raining so that people can stay here and listen to my talk because it's the last talk of today. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm quite excited to be here and I'll be talking about how you can calm down your overreactive forms using uncontrolled components. A little bit about me, my name is Akash Amirvasia. I write code at Razorpay and build products to help early stage founders in their startup journey. I also like trying new technologies and have contributed to a ton of projects and products uh, in open source. Fun fact, one of my uh, open source projects became number one product of the day on Product Hunt uh, and it wasn't planned at all, it just happened. Um, you can find my Twitter and GitHub, you can follow the stuff that I do and the projects that I contribute to and I also have a personal website where you can find me bragging about myself. So let's talk about forms. Forms are important, uh, why you may ask? Well, it's arguably the most interactive part of any web app today. A poorly optimized form can be a very jarring experience to the user. The user has a ton of things to do at any given point of time. And the fact that they have chosen your web app is itself a big thing. And then they have decided to fill the huge form that you're showing to them. And if that form is not optimized and causes a poor experience, uh, I think you're doing injustice to the user. So it's important to define what poorly optimized can be here. It can be the UI and the UX of the form. It can be the accessibility of the form fields, which is a very important topic in itself. And it can also be the performance of the form, which is what we'll be discussing in detail today. Um, obviously, no one likes a form that has a noticeable lag while typing. And uh, by the end of this talk, we'll build a nice API that actually eliminates these kind of issues. So let's look at a simple example at how forms are usually built in React. I'm sure most of you have you know, build forms this way at one point or another. So here, this is a very simple login form. And here we have two fields, email and password. Uh, here we have, you know, two state variables, email, password for storing the value of each of these fields. And then we set the value of uh, input uh, email as the value of the email state variable. And, the, and we attach the on change handler, which updates the value of the state. This is a very common form uh, technique that I'm sure most of us have built at one point or another. Um, and obviously since it's a form, we can attach a on submit handler and within the uh, handler we can access the values of email and password and use it to uh, actually do the operation of the form. So this is cool. Let's actually try counting the number of renders of this simple form. So I'll just type in a very simple email address some password, nothing fancy, and look at the number of re-renders, 26. This is just two fields, and it has rendered 26 times. Now just imagine this becoming larger, adding more input fields. Uh, maybe the user types a lot of text. At every keystroke, your form, your components inside the form keep re-rendering. So it's bad, and it gets even worse with more components. As, you, as the form grows, as the input elements increase, as you have, add more decorative components within your form, uh, the performance gets worse and worse because you are rendering way too much. And the reason I'm even talking about this is because I have been a victim to this. This is another side project of mine called Diode. Um, it is not important to know what the project does, but this entire page that you see here is actually a large, large form. So here we have like uh, a select, uh, you know, menu. We have input. We have like a few switches. We have dynamic inputs, which you know the user can click on add to add more input fields. Click on remove to remove them. 
if we scroll down, there's a few more decorative components just to see how things are working. And there are, you know, again, more switches, which if you turn on, will show even more <laughs> input fields. So all of these things, all of these components are actually one giant form and there's a small submit button or a save button at the end to save all the changes. And honestly, I built this entire thing with using control components, you know, a simple state, updating each and every field uh, and storing the new state in the large object. And yeah, it wasn't really a good experience. <laughs> at every keystroke, even on a powerful Mac, I could feel the lag. I'm typing fast and the component is updating slowly. And it's very, very annoying, trust me. So yes, you could react.memo the components and use memo some expensive calculations too. But that doesn't really solve the underlying problem of over-rendering in the first place. So let's talk about, you know, an old friend, uncontrolled components. How many of you remember or even you know use uncontrolled components in your day-to-day -day stuff? <laughs> so uh, a quick refresher: uncontrolled component is one that stores its state data internally, and the consumer or the parent of the component that is using the component does not really control the component's state. It asks the component whenever it needs the latest data for some operation. In case of the form elements. The DOM manages the state of the form fields and that is why the React components don't have to manage the state and hence re-renders are not required for reflecting the changes because DOM is already optimized to do these things. So it's better to you know, leave it to the DOM as long as you don't have custom logic or if you don't understand what uh, optimizations that you can do in React itself. So let's try to build uncontrolled forms using uncontrolled components. So we can use uncontrolled components for simple forms with lot less boilerplate. Um, in the next slide, I'll show an example with only uncontrolled uh, input elements and you'll see how less boilerplate that is. And the result is actually a really nice user experience and a great developer experience as well. Again, I'll come to it in the next slide. And just like Ken said three years back, <laughs> so he put out this tweet at 3 a.m. Uh, so I'm pretty sure he was serious about this. Um, so now let's actually uh, look at how we can, you know, how most forms out there should be built using uncontrolled components. So same form, same simple login form. We have two inputs, email, password. Um, notice how we are not setting value or on change, all that. It's just the simple name field that we are assigning so that we can figure out which input has which value. And within our uh, on submit handler, we are getting all the data of the form by simply using the form data API. The form data API takes a form element and it gives you the entire data about the form. And you can use this snippet of code to convert that form data to a simple object where the key in that object will be the name of the input and the value will be the value in the input field. And look at this code. This I, I think it's smaller and much easier to understand compared to the, un, uh, the controlled uh, counterpart that we had seen earlier. So here, let's actually try to count the number of uh, renders. Any guesses how many times this component renders? Uh, yes, so let's actually try it out. Notice how many times it's rendering. It's actually not re-rendering at all because we don't have any state updates. Our UI is not changing, so there's no point in actually causing a re-render. So this looks awesome, right? Even though it's not the most React way of doing things, but I think it works very well for most forms out there. Um, unfortunately, it has various drawbacks for serious forms. And by serious, I mean those forms that do more than just collecting and submitting data to a server. So how do you perform complex validation in this case? You can rely on you know, HTML uh, pattern and you know, native ways of validating, but you can go only go to some extent and you would uh, require some extra validations using JavaScript. And it's quite hard to do in this setup that we have. The second thing is how do you have fields that cause changes in the UI. In the example of a project that I showed earlier, I had a switch which on turning on was actually showing more input fields. But with this setup, 
how will I cause, uh, how will I have a UI that actually depends on the value of other input fields? It's you can do it, uh, but it's very hard and it gets very clumsy. Second thing is, uh, third thing is, how do you update values declaratively? When you're using control components, it's very easy to update the value programmatically. You just have to update the state, and that will automatically be ref reflected. But here you'll have to, you know, dig deep into the DOM API and then set the correct attribute. Uh, and only then maybe it will work correctly. Then it's computed field values, again, you know, things that depend on other things. Uh, basically what I'm getting to at is you have lost reactivity and control altogether when you're using uncontrolled components. So we are at two extremes over here. We like the simplicity and performance that we just got, but not at the cost of reactivity. So uh, the two extremes are using uncontrolled components, we are getting the nice performance, the nice user experience, but we have lost reactivity, which is an important thing. Second thing with control components, which gives us all the reactivity benefits, but then there's way too many re-renders, and it might slow things down when you have a large form. So how do we find a middle ground here? Say hello to on-demand reactivity. This is just a fancy term that I coined one hour back. Uh, it just means that cause state updates when you actually need and use uncontrolled components otherwise. So let's try to build a simple API around this idea. Um, pretty sure nobody saw that. <laughs> so let's start by some simple refactoring. First we start by actually you know, creating a simple ref with an empty object called fields on line 2. And what we're doing is trying to store the ref of every input that we have in the form so that we can programmatically do some interesting stuff with it. So here on line, I think, 9, uh, we are, you know, storing the ref of the email input within the fields object and similarly for password. And then we assign uh, the onChange handler. Now the onChange is actually a very important event if you think about it because it inherently is the most react uh, is the function that tells you that something has changed in the input and that is probably a hint to you that if you are actually dependent on the value of that input you should probably consider re-rendering and if you don't actually depend on it there's no point in re-rendering so here for the email input the on change handler uh, if you let's say my form actually dependent uh, depended on the email inputs value i can actually trigger a re-render manually within the input emails on change handler. If I don't depend on it, no need to uh, trigger a re-render. Again some refactoring, so we had two different on change handlers, now I've just extracted it out uh, to a single one. We can still differentiate between which input has actually changed by getting the name of the input. Now let's actually try to extract all these things to a use form hook because the thing here is that we are actually writing a lot of repetitive code in the input. We assign name, we assign ref, we assign on change. Uh, again, when we add another input, we'll have to assign name, ref, and on change, which is quite repetitive. So let's just extract out everything. So this is use form. Uh, nothing different, only one function that has been added called register. Uh, what register does is it takes the name of the input field that we were manually setting as the prop and it returns all the props that needs to be assigned. So in the previous example we were you know assigning name, ref, on change. Here in the register we are returning name, ref and on change dynamically. And from the consumer side it becomes very convenient to use. You can just call register, email and destructure all the props um, and spread it across the input uh, element. Uh, while we are at it, let's actually add another field called confirm password. So we are now building a sign up form. The user can enter email, password and confirm password. And let's go ahead. So the next thing that we'll discuss about is thinking about the API. So whenever I'm building like a library or some dev tooling, I like to think backwards. I first start by thinking about the most ideal API that I would like to, I would enjoy using when I'm building something and then try to bring it backward and implement that. So if I find an API uh, interface and, you know, a structure that is very flexible, very enjoying to work with, only then I go ahead and implement it uh, to actually work. So as a consumer, what do I have to do with a form? 
right now i have only registered fine the most important thing about the form is actually getting the values of the form so let's uh, expose a function called get values which you know we can use whenever we want the values of the form so here in this example we have handle sign up where we are calling get values and we'll get all the values of the form whenever we need values we'll call get values the next function that we'll expose is an important one and it's called watch so watch is a function to declaratively subscribe to changes to a form field a lot of jargon there but just uh, it's a fancy way of subscribing to changes of input elements uh, without having to you know attach event listeners or anything like that and uh, uh, as we get into implementing it i think it will become more clearer but here what i'm doing on line 15 is uh, you know watching the value of password watching the value of confirm password and checking if they are equal if they are not equal i'll show the message passwords don't match and the reason we are using watch is because as soon as the user you know types a password in both the fields that are same i want to hide that uh, passwords don't match message so my ui has kind of it is now dependent on the value of password and co confirm password and that's why i want to subscribe to listen to the changes of password and confirm password fields and the fun thing about this uh, watch function is that it's declarative and you can subscribe and unsubscribe automatically so here let's say i add a checkbox a very contrived example so let's say i add a checkbox to allow the user to enable or dis disable this password checking logic let's say the user disables it that means the watch check password match function call will return false and i'll automatically not subscribe to listening to password and confirm password fields as soon as the user turns it on the watch password confirm password that ternary branch will be executed and i'll automatically subscribe to listen to the password and confirm password changes so let's go ahead and actually implement the use form hook the first function was get values this is quite simple we already have uh, an object with all the uh, input elements that are there in the form we just go through it and get all the values and we return that in a nice format this is the interesting bit so the watch as i said is a way for the consumer to subscribe to listen to the changes of specific inputs and here what we do is first we start by creating a set i'll get to why we create a set uh, come to the watch functions definition what we are doing is first we are adding the name of the input field that the user is interested to listen to in the set and then we return the current value that we have uh, from the function now whenever the on change handler is called remember the handle change function was set as on change for all the input elements in the form whenever the handle change is called we check if the watched set has the name of the input that the user had subscribed to only then we want to trigger a re-render if the user hasn't or if the part of the component code did not execute with any watch function calls the set will be empty and there will no, not be any re-renders because that if condition will become completely false and we'll prevent any uh, re-render now how do we trigger a re-render so this is a very naive way uh, just add a state variable and here i'm just you know updating the value to something so that it forces a re-render and let's actually see how it uh, looks from the consumer side um i haven't changed a lot over here so just the check watch check password and watch password all that logic i've just extracted out as a variable is invalid and yeah i use it to show the passwords don't match message so let's actually try this out um i'm changing email notice the number of renders it still stays as one because we haven't subscribed to listen to the changes of email now let me actually try changing password any guesses what will happen will the number of renders increase or stay the same oh nice so it will actually stay the same so i'm typing something and the number of renders still stay the same um any reason any guesses why it stays the same okay i'm typing confirm password still it stays the same nothing is happening now let me actually turn on this checkbox the number of renders increased by 1 because my code is actually listening to uh, or it has subscribed to the value of this checkbox and because it changed i triggered a re-render and my ui updated 
now let me actually try typing notice how i'm automatically subscribed to the password input and the number of renders are increasing let me actually remove this and let me try uh, typing the same password and because my condition is invalid became uh, false i don't show the message anymore so my ui has uh, started behaving reactive and we aren't using controlled uh, components anywhere till now we are still using uncontrolled components but the added benefit here is that we have selective control over which fields we want to listen to for changes so is this the best it looks uh, it looks like we have reached a really nice uh, api right we are able to selectively listen to fields that might actually cause changes and we prevent re-renders when the input is not really causing any changes to the ui unfortunately no we are still over rendering because we render on input change and not on derived data change any guess like what is over rendering still over here so i'll just uh, yeah so notice when i'm typing the email nothing happens this is behaving as we want but let's say i type some password and also enable this check my is invalid is now true and i keep typing and notice i'm still re-rendering this is actually a wasted render my ui hasn't changed the is invalid is still true so i don't have to cause a re-render right because the data the is invalid is still true and my ui is still the same so why am i re-rendering and causing extra renders similarly if i come to confirm password notice how even this is causing many renders because again we are just listening to the value not the change in the is invalid check that we are doing so the solution to solve this is actually memoizing the derived data of your form fields and render only when it changes so in the uh, code over here we had the is invalid variable this is actually a derived data because it depends on the values of various form inputs it depends on three uh, inputs one is the checkbox the second is the password input field the third is the confirm password field whenever any of these change i just trigger a re-render i don't actually check whether the value is invalid has changed or not only if is invalid has changed i should actually trigger a re-render because is invalid is a boolean it can only be true or false so let's actually try to you know add memoization a bit over here let's start by first defining a simple api again around defining the derived data logic so here we have you know we are passing derived and the is invalid as a key to that object and we are defining the logic of how we can compute this uh, uh, is invalid data so in this case we are just you know checking whether password is not equal to confirm password and we are returning that so it's simply you know defining the derived data here and how do we listen to the changes of the derived data well we already defined a very nice api right we we defined the watch function can we use the same watch function to listen to changes of the derived data as well instead of just listening for input changes so now actually let, let's try implementing this it looks like a lot of code but honestly it's quite simple uh, there's only two functions that i've added here one is get derived to compute the values of each of the derived data so it goes through all the you know data that you have defined in the derived object and it computes the value for each of them and the second th the second function is is derived different this is a function to check whether the previous derived state is different from the current derived state basically so we also have a ref uh, called memoize that's just storing the current state of derived values and whenever we want to check whether the derived data has changed we can check using the is derived different method over here now this is actually the important part so here what we are doing is um, first in the watch function uh, we were previously returning only the value from the fields ref that we had so uh, like if the user has subscribed to some input field we return the value at that time but now let's say the fields ref that we had we don't have let's say the input field called is invalid right so instead of you know searching for fields now check memoized uh, ref as well because that is where the derived data is stored if you find the data over there just return it and within the handle change we make small updates we calculate the next derived data state we compare whether the derived 
data has changed using the is derived function, uh, is derived different function. And yeah, if it has changed, we again force a render. Um, and also we store the next derived data to the ref memoize so that in the next call we can again perform this comparison. So it looks like a lot of code, but honestly it's quite simple. And I think the result that you get, which we'll see in a bit, is actually quite uh, nice. This is how it looks like from the consumer side. We have just de defined a derived data. Previously we were just using, you know, const is invalid equals watch, watch, watch. Here we are just passing that in a different way because now we have a really nice mechanism of handling derived data. So now let's actually try this is a very optimized form. So the email input, no renders, only one render which was the initial render. Now let's try the password. We got one render but after that we don't get any re-renders because the is invalid data that we had calculated that actually hasn't changed. It became true and it stays true. So we don't cause an extra render. Now let's actually try changing the confirm password. Notice how we are still not re-rendering because the is invalid is still true and nothing has actually changed. As soon as the passwords become equal, my is invalid becomes false and now is uh, when I actually cause another re-render because my UI is dependent on that value and it's uh, causing a change. So that's why we get another render. So uh, we started out with how many re-renders? 26. We are now at 3. And it, this one also has an extra form field. So that is also one more thing. Um, an important thing here is remember that you should use this only if you actually need to because we are doing a lot of things for handling derived data. We are actually, you know, storing, we are comparing previous and the next one. If you have a very simple form similar to the one that we have here, it might actually slow your form down the, than actually improving it. Uh, so if you have, let, let's say a very small form, maybe in this case, in such a small form, re-rendering multiple times is actually faster than actually performing the derived check. But if you have a large form, similar to the one that I showed uh, earlier, which was the side project I was working on, there using this concept, right, it saved a lot of re-renders. But wait, there's some good news. You don't have to implement the use form hook because it's already available as a library. It's called React hook form. It's made by Bill and the awesome community, awesome React community. And uh, it's honestly, it's the same thing that we developed here today, right? The API is almost the same. Obviously, the implementation might be very different. There are a lot of edge cases that we didn't actually handle here, uh, but the U, uh, React hook form um, handles for you and it makes it even better. The one thing that React hook form doesn't support right now is the derived data logic that we added, um, where you know we were listening to the changes to derived data and not just the input change. Uh, that is something which is missing in React hook form, so you still have to listen to input field changes and cause extra re-renders. With that, we have kind of come to the end of this talk. So summarizing, we discussed why using state for storing all form data might not be a good approach and how you can use uncontrolled components when your UI does not depend on the form, which I think is the case for a lot of forms out there. And if your UI actually depends on the value of the input fields, you can selectively listen to only those fields that are required for changes. And even then, let's say you still have a lot of re-renders, you should actually listen to data changes instead of not just the input changes and you can use memoization and the comparison technique that we discussed. Again, use this only if you need bottlenecks because React is already fast and you know adding these additional checks might actually slow things down. So do pro proper testing and only if you need, try this approach. And the final thing is wrap everything in a delightful API, which is actually fun to use. The last thing, um, I think this is an important point that I would like to share. Take a peek at the internals of libraries that you use. I think you'll get to learn a lot of awesome stuff. With that, I've come to the end of this talk. Um, thank you for having me. It has been great giving a talk over here. It's been a privilege. And uh, props to the volunteers for you know organizing this so well. Uh, you can connect with me on Twitter, GitHub, LinkedIn, email, website. 
if you want access to these slides you can just you know go to slides.akashamirvasia.com you'll find the slides over there uh, with that yeah uh, that's it thank you